Good afternoon and welcome back to school, albeit a virtual school, but welcome back nonetheless. And I hope you did take advantage of the two weeks of the Easter holidays to get a bit of fresh air and to travel within your confined two kilometre zone, but to keep busy and to get lungs full of fresh air and to enjoy the little bit of free time that we have. Because now that we've returned virtually to school, we have a curriculum to follow and we've got chapters to finish. So again, I would ask you, as you did in the previous term, so excellently up towards Easter, you really did engage with the work I gave you. You were very, very diligent and I want that to continue right through until the end of May. We've got about two or three more chapters left to do. The first one I want to delve into today is measurement and units. Now, I'm going to tweak the chapter slightly because obviously there is a number of experiments and work that we have to do in terms of laboratory exercise that I have to try and modify for your home so that you can do similar experiments at home with the minimum amount of fuss, okay? And as I've said to you already in an email I just sent out, when I do set you a practical, the practical work has to be done. Practical work is a mandatory part of your preparation for junior cycle science. So therefore, they're not optional. You can't take an experiment and decide to leave it on the shelf. They have to be done. If there's a difficulty with doing them, or if there's some reason why you can't get them done at home, I would ask your parents to email me and just let me know exactly why uh, or where the difficulties lie. And we'll see what we can do in order to try and help out from this end. Okay, so straight into it. We're going to deal with measurements and units. Now, if I was to simply ask you a question to name some units of measurement, I'm sure you could all come up with two or three different words that would represent measurement. For example, you measure people's height in feet and in inches. Okay. You can also measure height in centimetres. We measure time in seconds. We measure our body mass in kilograms or the old fashioned method in stones and pounds and so on. So there's a rake of different ways that we can actually look at measurement. But we have to try and remember that when we're dealing with a scientific community, the scientific community must speak the same language. So if I'm using stones and pounds for mass here and the rest of the world are using kilograms, it's going to cause a little bit of a difficulty when scientists are communicating with one another, having to change the old units of stones and pounds into kilograms before they can actually understand what they're saying. So what they came up with was what we call the System International. Now, those of you speaking French will know exactly what that is. It's the international system of units, okay? It's the SI system. And the SI system has a definite unit for each of the various types of measurement that we have. So there's a definite unit for length, there's a definite unit for mass, there's a definite unit for time, and so on. And when I'm talking about mass, what I mean is what you used to call weight. Now, there's a big difference between the two, and we'll talk about that as we go on. But from now on, when I want to talk about how heavy something is, I'm going to refer to the mass of the object. Okay, so let's begin. And as I said already, measurement matters. Measurement is an extremely important part of science because we have to be able to describe how long, how fast, how heavy. Okay, so these are questions that need to be answered by units of measurement, whether they be centimeters or meters or seconds or hours or whatever it's going to be. But measurement is extremely important. And I know if you want to decorate your bedroom or if you want to paint the walls or if you want to put wallpaper up or carpet on the floor, you have to measure the area of those places before you can do any work. So measurement is extremely important. Most scientific research needs accurate measurement. Now we'll talk about this at the end of this chapter. Accuracy in science is extremely important. It's not good enough for me to say, ah, the mass of that is about two kilograms. That's no good. We need to know in science exactly what the distance is, exactly what the number of hours is, exactly what the length is. So accuracy is a huge thing in science. And when we're using scientific instruments, the scientific instrument that we use is the one that is best able to give us the most accurate unit of measurement that we seek, okay? And we'll talk a bit more about the objects in the lab that we use to measure things and how we can kind of find them around the kitchen and find them at home and use them at home to do various different things. So today we're basically going to look at length. We're going to introduce the concept of length and we're going to introduce it from the point of view of being a straight line or being a curved line, okay? You can use a ruler, of course, to measure a straight line, but how do you measure, how do you use a ruler to measure a curved line? Well, the answer is you don't. We have to find another way to do it. And we've got to find a way to do it that is Accurate, that's the most important thing. The SI system allows scientists to communicate in the same scientific language. So if I'm talking about kilograms here in Ireland, the scientists in Japan have to understand kilograms. And there's an agreement that the SI units of mass, of time, of length, will be the vocabulary and the language that scientists use to speak to one another when they're talking about their measurements. 
of whatever they're using or whatever they're measuring at that particular time. When we measure something, we express the result as a number followed by a unit. So if somebody said to you, how long is the car? Oh, it's about three. Now there's something missing there, okay? It's about three what? Elephants? No, it's about three feet long. It's about six feet. It's about uh, 2,000 centimetres. Whatever way you're going to do it. You get out your ruler and you go from the bumper at the front to the bumper at the back and you give back your measurement in metres and centimetres or whatever way you want to measure that yourself. Okay, But we've got to make sure that when we give a number in measurement that we follow that number with a unit. Six feet high, two feet long, three hours, 20 seconds. Okay, Because when you give the units, then people know exactly what you're talking about. If you leave out the units, it sounds unfinished. Yeah. How long did it take you to run the marathon? Oh, about five. Something wrong there. About five up, about five hours. Okay. So give the units at the end of every number. So what are the units? Well, if I was to ask you to write down any units of measure that you're familiar with, as I did at the start of this class, then you'd be able to tell me seconds, hours, meters, kilometers, and so on. Okay. So we're all very familiar with a number of units of measurement. The SI system, this standard system, is what's used around the world. It's how scientists communicate with each other. Common standard units are as follows. Now look at this table here. We've got length, we've got mass, that means how heavy something is. We've got time and we've got temperature, okay? And I suppose the first three you're fairly familiar with. Length is measured in meters, mass is measured in kilograms, and time is measured in seconds. Now they are the standard units. So when we're dealing with mass length, we're talking about the meter. It doesn't mean that everything has to be measured in meters. We take the meter and we can break the meter up into smaller units called centimeters and we can break them up again into millimeters. So there are smaller units of the meter available for us to use depending on the size of the object that we want to measure. Likewise with mass, the standard unit is the kilogram, but of course sometimes the kilogram is too heavy. So we've got grams and we've got milligrams, okay? And they are smaller units of the same standard unit, okay? Time is measured in seconds for the very simple reason that when we're measuring something in physics and in chemistry and biology, it's usually quite fast. So therefore, if we were to talk about measuring things in minutes, we could miss, miss the finish of a chemical reaction or we might miss the finish of an acceleration experiment or something like that. So we're dealing with seconds. But that doesn't mean that we can't use bigger variations of the same unit. So for example, if I gather 60 seconds together, I get a minute. And if I gather 60 minutes, I get an hour. But what I'm trying to point out to you here is that every one of the different measurements has a standard unit. And that standard unit is what we refer to as the basic unit of measurement for each one of these. So for length, it's the meter. For mass, it's the kilogram. For time, it's the second. Now, for temperature, it's Kelvin. But you're probably saying, well, why isn't it degrees Celsius? When we're using the thermometers in the lab, we were all measuring degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius is okay, but degrees Celsius doesn't tell the full story, okay? At the moment, it's fine to use it in the lab to measure temperature, but it doesn't tell the full story. And we'll reveal the mystery behind Kelvin as we move through the first couple of slides. So they're your common units, and they're the units that do have to be known, okay? And the symbols we use are M for meter, KG for kilograms, S for the second, and a capital K for Kelvin. No degree symbol, just a capital K. Sometimes, as I said already, we use other variations of these measurements if the quantities we are measuring are smaller or larger than the standard unit. So if a kilometre is too big, then we can come back down to metre. If that's too big, we can come down to the centimetres. If they're still too big, we can go to the millimetre. All right? And likewise, if the metre is too small, we can go to kilometres and so on. So it doesn't matter what... A ver version of the measurements we're using as long as we stick to the standard unit as being the reference for each measurement. Okay, so if I was to ask you, how would you get the length of a straight line? What would you say? You'd say use a ruler. Okay, so if I was to draw a line, what would you do? You take your ruler and you'd use it. Now, believe it or believe it not, people are still a little confused as to how to use a ruler. So I'm going to demonstrate here how to use a ruler. A line segment is nothing more than the shortest distance between two points. I want you to think about that. I want you to visualize two points in your head and I want you to visualize a straight line segment between the two and that's the shortest distance between them. Of course, if you had two points there, you could go this way, but that's not the shortest distance. Or you could go from here around the back and out to the front. It's not the shortest distance. 
the shortest distance between any two points is always a straight line segment between those two points. Okay, And the lovely thing about a straight line segment is it can be measured by a ruler. So what do we do? We put our two points on the page and we measure the centimetres or the millimetres as the distance between the two points. Okay, What instrument could you use? You already know this because you use it every single day in the lab. The instrument that we would use is obviously a ruler. Now, if I was to ask you to measure the length of the entire laboratory, the lab that we have in school, then you wouldn't be using a little ruler from your pencil case. You'd use a bigger version of a ruler, which we call a meter stick. OK, and you'd lie the meter stick down and you'd count the number of meters it takes to get to the end of the classroom and so on. So, again, even though the units change, they're bigger units, meters this time, the instrument that carries the units can also change. It can be as small as a little ruler or as big as a meter stick. OK, and we'll talk more about that in a few moments. So, yes, we'd use a ruler to measure a straight line. And what units could you use? Well, I want you to take a look. Just take a look at this thing here. On this ruler, there are... 12 and a little bit numbers. The distance between each of these numbers is what we would call one centimeter. Okay, so that distance there is one centimeter. Now look closely in between the zero and the one, and you'll notice that there are 10 smaller lines, and those little lines are called millimeters. So straight away on your ruler, they're helping you to measure not only in centimeters but in smaller version of length units called millimetres. Okay, So in this case, if every centimetre has 10 millimetres, well, that's called a conversion factor. So therefore, 2 centimetres would be 20 millimetres. 60 millimetres would be 6 centimetres. You see the way you can change around? They both represent the same length, but they're described in different variations of the units. Meters would be way too big for a straight line in your copy, so therefore we deal with either centimeters or with millimeters. Okay, so how do I use it? Well, first of all, draw your two points A and B. Okay, the line segment between A and B is the shortest distance between them. So there it goes, and then you get your ruler. Now, where you position your ruler is extremely important. If you want to make sure that this is done easy, if you want to use your ruler in the easiest way possible, one of those points must be set to zero. See that? See where I put the zero? I put the zero at A. And then all I've got to do is to carry on down through this ruler until I get to here, which is B, the end point of this line segment. And underneath B, there's a mark. See that? Now, this mark happens to be five tiny graduations after 10. So in this case here, I can say simply that the length of that line segment is 10.5 centimetres. Or I could say it another way, if I didn't want to use a decimal point. If each one of those large numbers is 10 millimetres, then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then five more little graduations would give me also 105 millimetres. Exactly the same line segment but different variations of units to describe the same thing. Okay, And millimetres won't have a decimal point in them in, case, in the case of this line, whereas centimetres will have. So therefore, if you want to change from centimetres to millimetres, you simply take centimetres, multiply them by 10, and that's millimetres. If you want to change from millimetres to centimetres, you're going to divide by 10 in order to get your centimetres. So there's a way to change around between both. And you can decide what way you want to measure these things because if they're given back accurately, that's the key thing, whether they be in centimetres or millimetres, your answer will be valid. Okay, so let's just take off that there. Okay, so as we said, the ruler is placed on zero at A and then we travel down to B and we see that it's 10.5 centimetres, okay? Or 105 millimetres as we said already. So what I want you to do now, I want you to pause this video and I want you to go to your copies and I just want you to draw three random straight lines and using your ruler, I want you to go and measure them in both centimetres and millimetres and then you can unpause this video and we'll carry on. Good, okay. So now, returning to our centimetres, hopefully you're all versed now in using your rulers. You're very comfortable using them, putting the zero at one point measuring the length of the line in centimetres or in millimetres. So what is the standard unit for length? 
cast your mind back to the table at the beginning the standard unit of length is the meter but sometimes if the meter is too big we fall back on smaller units called centimeters of which there are a hundred in a meter or we go to millimeters of which there are ten in a centimeter now all of these numbers are numbers that will help us to convert between the different units and that's what we're going to do towards the end of today's class to learn how to convert okay so the standard unit or the international unit as we said the uh, system international if you want to be really French and posh about it all is the meter centimeters and millimeters are also used and some lengths have common names so for example somebody might say to you how far is it to the local shop that's distance they might say to you, how high is the roof in your bedroom? That's distance, okay, that's length. They might say, how wide was the swimming pool? That's going to be distance as well. So there are some lengths have a common name. So height and width and distance and how far. They're all measuring straight lines. Or sometimes they could be measuring curve lines, depending on the journey that it takes to get from A to B, from one point to the other. So what is the length of both of these objects shown here? So just to make sure you're okay with ruler use, how long is that carrot? Well, where do we start counting? At zero. And we go up along the ruler until we get to the end of the carrot, which is the dotted red line at the end of the carrot. And we notice here that we're running between zero and nine. Now be careful. Remember what I told you at the start of this chapter? All measurements must be given in numbers followed by units. What units did I just use? Well, the ruler tells me that we're dealing with centimetres. So therefore this is nine centimetres long. What else could it be? If I didn't want to use centimetres, what else could I use? Couldn't I use millimetres? And I now know that every centimetre has 10 millimetres. So therefore nine centimetres could represent the length of the carrot in centimetres or 90 millimetres is also an acceptable way to describe the length of that carrot. Okay, what about the next one? What about this pen? What do you notice? Starts at zero, up along the ruler, which is in centimetres. We're going from here all the way to here. Okay, so what do I notice? I've gone from five, past five, to the half mark. Now, there's two ways to describe this. In centimetres, it would be five and a half, or in decimal form, 5.5 centimetres. If that was written in terms of millimetres, you would multiply it by 10 and you'd get 55 millimetres. Okay, so again, both very valid ways to describe the length of these two objects. Good, and again, you'll practice this, you'll get more used to using the ruler as time goes on. They're not just good for ruling pages, they're good for measuring things as well. How do we change our length? And I'm going to finish here because I'm going to give you an exercise to do and I need you to be very comfortable with understanding how to change from millimetres to centimetres to metres and so on, okay? All I've got to remember is always go back to the standard unit of length. The standard unit of length is the meter. Inside a meter, there are 100 centimeters, but inside every centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. Now, I want you to think about that. So if I was to ask you how many millimeters would be in a meter, I want you to think about that in your head. How many millimeters would be in a meter? If a meter, contains 100 centimetres and every centimetre contains 10 millimetres, what do I do with the 100 and the 10? The answer is I multiply them. So therefore 10 hundreds is a thousand, so there's a thousand millimetres in a full metre, in a standard unit of length. Okay, so that's what we want to get used to in this particular class. Okay, so here's what we have to remember. One kilometre. Now, if you're trying to describe the distance between your house and the shop, I think for most of us, we would probably safe to say it's over a kilometre away. OK, some of us are not lucky enough to be living beside the shop. If you are well done, you can measure it in metres instead of kilometres. But kilo, I want to talk about this thing here. One km. See that K? That K always represents a thousand. So one kilometre is a thousand metres. So every time you see that K, you can replace it with three zeros. So one km, take out the K, replace it with three zeros, what does it become? 1,000 metres, as I've said here. Every metre, as we know already, contains 100 centimetres, and every centimetre contains 10 millimetres. Now, from the point of view of our curriculum, 
and our junior psychoscience, we're not going to get any smaller than a millimetre. Even though we know the width of a human hair is a fraction of a millimetre, we're not going to get into that. There are other smaller units we could talk about, like nanometers and picometers, etc. Let's leave that to leave insert. Let them worry about that. We're going to worry about these ones, okay? So a kilometre is a thousand metres. A metre is a hundred centimetres. And a centimetre is ten millimetres. Do you see that? A thousand, a hundred, and ten. So you can kind of remember it that way. A kilometre is a thousand metres. A metre is a hundred centimetres. And a centimetre is 10 millimetres. So how do I change between these? How do I, if somebody wants to change from centimetres to millimetres or from millimetres up to metres, what do we do? And the answer is we follow the rules that I'm going to put here on this slide. See this? Now, if I want to go from millimetres to centimetres or centimetres to metres or metres to kilometres, here's what I need you to remember. If we are going from a small unit to a larger unit, there's obviously going to be less of them than there would be smaller units. So put it this way. If you buy a one packet of Skittles, okay, inside that one packet, there are about 30 individual Skittles. So in other words, the smaller the unit, the more of them there are going to be. It's one packet, but it's 30 individual Skittles. Or put it another way, 30 individual Skittles make up one packet. So the larger the object, the fewer of them there will be. And that's why we divide as we're going up the size of the, of the units of length. So as I'm going from millimetres to centimetres, centimetres to metres, metres to kilometres, I still have to remember there are 10 millimetres in a centimetre, there are 100 centimetres in a metre, there are 1,000 metres in a kilometre. So they're the numbers that I will divide by as I'm jumping up from millimetres to centimetres, or from centimetres to metres, or from metres to kilometres. Okay. Now, if I'm moving down the way, so if I want to turn kilometres into metres, well, metres are smaller than kilometres. And if metres are smaller, that means there's going to be more of them. So that's why I multiply. So as we're going from bigger units down to smaller ones, there are more. What letter does more begin with? M. So what do we do? We multiply. By what? by the same numbers I gave you earlier on in terms of how many millimetres in a centimetre, how many centimetres in a metre, many metres in a kilometre. So as long as you've sorted out how many of each unit are in larger units, then all we've got to do is multiply by that particular number to move down the chain from the bigger ones to the smaller ones. So I'm going to give you these to do here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one of each. And I'm going to show you how to change the first one of each. And then I'm going to leave you with the rest to do. And when we come back tomorrow, I'm going to ask you for the answers of these questions. All right. And hopefully you'll be well able to change between your units as it goes on. OK, so let me take I'm going to take a uh, part one of question one. I'm going to take part two of question two. I'm going to take part three. I'm oh, sorry, two of question three. And I'm going to take the last part of question four. So I'm going to take each of those. I'm just going to do them here very, very quickly to show you how easy these conversions are. So convert each of the following to centimetres. So I want to go from 750 millimetres to centimetres. Now let's think. Are centimetres bigger or smaller than millimetres? Okay, they're bigger. Because there's bigger, there's going to be less of them. Okay. And because there's less of them, we're going to divide by what? Well, how many millimetres are in a centimetre? The answer is 10. Look at it from your table up here. So I'm going to divide by 10, which tells me straight away that 750 millimetres is 75 centimetres. Very straightforward. OK, the next one. Let's convert 1.75 kilometres into millimetres. Wow. OK, if I'm going from kilometres to millimetres. I'm going from something big to something small. If I am moving towards a smaller unit, there's going to be more of them. More of them means we're going to multiply. Now, let's ask ourselves a question. How many millimetres in a kilometre? Well, first of all, let's think about that. There are 10 millimetres in a centimetre, so I'm going to multiply by 10. There are 100 centimetres in a metre, so I'm going to multiply by 100. 
and there are a thousand meters in a kilometer so I'm going to multiply by a thousand as well which means overall that I'm going to multiply by one two three four five six I'm going to multiply by a million and when I multiply by a million that moves the decimal point six places to the right hand side which will give me one seven five oh 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 millimeters now you do these in your calculator as long as you figure out what you've got to multiply by do the multiplication and you'll get your answer okay next one i want to go uh, eight let me just take those off so i want to go from 80 centimeters to meters okay so from 80 centimeters to meters what am i doing centimeters small meters big i'm going from small to big so there's going to be less so i'm going to divide how many centimeters in a meter 100 divide 80 by 100 on your calculator not point eight that's very straightforward and finally then i said we're going to take the last one of the fourth question which is 2750 meters into kilometers okay 2750 meters into kilometers now i'm going from meters to kilometers so i'm going to something bigger and if i'm going to something bigger there's going to be less of them so again i'm going to divide how many meters in a kilometer a thousand on your calculator 2750 divided by a thousand is 2.75 kilometers that's how we do it it's very very straightforward okay so i'm going to leave you with these to do I'm just going to do one extra little thing after this. I'm going to leave you with these to do between now and tomorrow. I'm going to come back to you tomorrow to check and make sure that you understand how to change your units. Use your calculator. Try and figure out are you going from small to big. If you are, then that's division. If you're going from big to small, then there's going to be more of them. So that's multiplication. And then just take the number of steps that are involved to go from one unit to the next. I hope that makes perfect sense to you. Okay. The last thing I want to look at in today's class, and again an exercise I'm going to leave you with is this. What happens if my line is curved? So how do I get my ruler to move around a curved line? You don't. A ruler is only used for a straight line. Okay. So in a situation where we have a curved line, like a road, for example, like this thing here, how would I measure the length of that road? And the answer is I would have to abandon my ruler or my meter stick in favor of a new instrument. And the new instrument that we would use on this road here would be called a trundle wheel. Now some of you may have met this in primary school. It's a big wheel with a handle and you walk with it and you walk around the curved roads and every time it hits a meter it clicks. So what you do is you count the number of clicks okay or you on some of them there's a little dial and it does it automatically for you. But you would use a trundle wheel and then you can simply guide the trundle wheel around the curves going from the start to the finish and when you get to the finish you read the little dial and that'll tell you exactly how long the road is. If it was a straight road that's the length it would have okay so that's called a trundle wheel and some of you already have used trundle wheels in primary school all right these things here if you don't remember them or if you didn't use them whenever we go back to the lab we've got a smaller version what about a curved line that you draw on your copy how would you get a trundle wheel to measure that you want it's too small so we need a reduced version of the trundle wheel and a reduced version of the trundle wheel is what we call an opisometer. Now that's a new name for all of you. An opisometer. And an opisometer looks like this. It's a little metal instrument that has a wheel that does exactly the same thing as a trundle wheel, but it allows us to measure the length of a curved line that is small enough to draw in our copies. Okay. Now you don't have an opisometer at home, I know, because the opisometers are in the lab. So instead, we've got an alternative way for you to measure the length of a straight line or a curved line. Okay, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment. The next slide simply tells me how to use it. Now it's quite straightforward. This wheel here, see this wheel? That wheel, when you're starting to use an opisometer, has to be rolled fully so that it's up against either end of the bracket that holds the wheel in place. So you roll the wheel until it hits the end. When it hits the end, you then place the opisometer on the end of your curved line and you move it around the line until you get to the end then you lift it off then you take your meter stick or your ruler you put the opisometer on zero and you roll the opisometer backwards until the wheel goes back to where it was in the beginning and it'll automatically stop 
And all you do then is you look at the ruler, you see what the little arrow, see that little arrow there? You see what that's pointing to, and that's the length of your curved line. So they're very, very easy to use. So step number one is that you roll the wheel to make sure that it's present at one end. Step number two, you run the oposometer forward along the curved line. Step number three, you put the oposometer on zero on your ruler and you roll it backwards until it stops. And step number four is you record the length of the line in the centimeters on the meter on the ruler or in millimeters, whatever suits yourself. Now again, we'll do this when we get back to the lab. We'll use the oposometer when we get back to the lab. But for the moment, how are you going to measure curved lines at home? Well, there's an easy way to do it. And it's a very, very simple way that people use all the time when they're measuring short curved lines. And that is that we use thread. Now, I want you to watch this video here, okay? I want you to click on that link in the slides that I just sent you. I want you to watch how the oposometer is used. Oh, sorry, how the thread is used, I should say, because we don't have an oposometer. And then I want you to do the same thing. I want you to draw curved lines in your copy. I want you to get a piece of thread. I want you to lay the thread along the line that you've drawn and then cut it or mark it when it gets to the end of the line. Then stretch it out, put it onto a ruler or a meter stick if you have one. Probably don't, but a ruler will do fine. And give me the length of those curved lines. Okay, so there's your curved line starting here at A finishing here at B, what do you do? You get a piece of string and you put the piece of string all the way around here like that onto the curve line as best you can, right up until it gets to the end. And then you take the thread, you open it, you put it along your ruler and you tell me what the length of your curve line is in meters or in centimeters, or sorry, in centimeters or in millimeters. Meters would be too big. I don't want you to draw meter lines because you don't have meter sticks, okay? So a millimeter or centimeter. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave you those two exercises. Go back two slides. Make sure that you can change between centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, etc. And then as an exercise here in your copy, I want you to draw three curved lines. I want you to get a piece of thread. I want you to put the thread over the line. I want you to cut it at the end or mark it stretch it out, put it onto a ruler and give me back the lengths of those curve lines in centimetres or in millimetres, whatever suits 